sixth round of the scheduled ten rounder between Roger Mayweather, the former junior lightweight champion of the world, and Freddie Pendleton. To Mayweather backing up exclusively now. Work his back, Freddie. Oh, 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 Mayweather. He's out. And Steele backs him up. He was caught up in the ropes. I don't know if Roger Mayweather can make it. Wow, is he wobbling. Uh-uh. Yeah. No way, it's an upset. Pendleton is going nuts. Pendleton, who has never fought here in Glitter Goats before, has captured the imagination of the fans here in Las Vegas. And there you look at the right hand. It got Mayweather in trouble. Now, Roger got hung up on the ropes. At this point, Richard Steele getting in, but just after Mayweather went down. AVEntertainmentLive.com, www.AVEntertainmentLive.com. It's AV Entertainment Live, AVETV Live. Hey, I'm back with you. It's Jesse Torero, and we are back in the house. It's the middle of the week, a long Labor Day weekend, and we had a great time. And, uh, oh, oh, you want to know who, who's hanging out with me right now? Oh, come on now. Now, you don't know this guy? I'm going to tell you who this guy is. The term champion means something to Freddie Pendleton. On August 29th of 1992, Pendleton and his band were ready to put months of training to work as they met for the vacant IBF lightweight title. Early in the bout, it looked like a wild affair. Only to have it end here in the second round. It was a technical draw due to this unintentional headbutt. And as the blood came down the face of Freddie Pendleton, it put on hold the dreams of both men. Freddie's career has had plenty of ups and downs, a lot of early losses, but his first win came here in 1986 when he shocked Roger Mayweather and knocked him out in the sixth round. In 1988, Freddie faced contender Sammy Fuentes. He was supposed to be tough. Uh-uh. It was a TKO in the first round for Pendleton. Later that year, Freddie went on to win the USBA crown in a 10-round TKO win over Razai Bramble, a former world champion. Surviving an up-and-down career would discourage many, but not Freddie. He has looked forward to what gave him the power to keep on going, even through the bad times. Believing in God and knowing that it's, uh, you know, whatever you can, whatever you want to do, you can accomplish. If you put yourself, if you apply yourself, you can, you know, become champion of the world if necessary. And um, if that, that's what I really wanted to do. And I uh, applied myself and worked hard and... And now I'm getting a shot at, you know, actually accomplishing that goal. You all know him as Fearless Freddie Pendleton. What's up, brother? How you doing? It's good to be here. Man, you are looking great. I know everybody tells you that, but uh, wait a minute. Are you still bo Did you box tonight, or, or did your guy box tonight? I had a, guy, I had a fighter fight tonight. He didn't um, pull it off, but he did well. Well, I'll tell you, this guy looks like he could go 12 rounds. I mean, you you came up in the day when it was 15 rounds, wasn't it? Yeah, I was the last, matter of fact, I was the last 15 round scheduled 15 round fight. I fought in uh, Santa Domingo, fought for UBA title, and it was the last 15 round fight ever. I won the championship, but I stopped the guy in six. I really wanted to go 15 because my goal was to be like the great champions of old and, and win 15 round championships, but they changed it the game of boxing that went 15 rounds that last when they turned the corner on round 12 that was where the heart and the soul of these warriors came from because that's when you saw the the, the guys digging down deep and their skill set really come out championship rounds championship rounds and that's where you know, between then, that time, and the day, that yeah, you, the fighters are so much different, you know. And you show everybody you are the best. Ray Leonard going against Tommy Hearns. I mean, Hagler beating up on Hearns. That was, those fights were great fights. And, um, you know, it's, it's just not the same. Like, we had this last big fight with uh, him and Pacquiao. I mean, it was 12 I'm, rounds of dancing and moving. And, uh, you know, I, I pretty, in, in my heart, I know that, Floyd is a better fighter, but he didn't show it that night. The last three rounds, those championship rounds that, that we all call them, that really set the legacy. When you have those three, you know, that, like I said, I call them the blood stake rounds. 
you go down you throw everything in it and everything you have you use it in those last three rounds to win that fight and if you can get the guy out of there possibly most of the time that is the time where you could take the guy out in those last three rounds because he's not able to hang in there with you because that shows who the champion really is you know? no no and 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 we're going to talk about how the game has changed um today versus 10 years ago versus 15 years ago i mean with you we could go back to the mid 1980s and talk about how the game has changed and i just want to touch on some of the some of the heights that this man has 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 attained it, it, it's it's you really don't know as a fan when you're watching a, a fighter fight over a period of years i mean there are guys that come and go real quick but when you're watching a guy like you um who was able to stay around the game and, and be successful at it you know as a fan you really don't know all the accomplishments that a fighter really has because you only see him for a few minutes but i'm just gonna i'm just gonna read something here now correct me on everything that i may have made a mistake on because i i took this off of my knowledge and i took it off wikipedia okay man we can't get away from that so he's got He's got 78 fights under his belt. We're talking about fearless Freddie Pendleton. Freddie Pendleton from Philly. He's got 78 fights under his belt. 42, 42 wins, correct? Something? Oh, okay. Well, I'll go there. Hey, look, I'm not going to argue with this man. If it wants to be 45 today, it's going to be 45 today, brother, okay? All right. I might arm wrestle with you, but that's about it. <laughs> You'll probably beat me in arm wrestling. Uh, about that but he's got uh, 34 KOs 34 KOs and and that was a lot of those KOs were straight from your right hand right hand I think I had one from my left hook from the majority of my right hand if you ever saw if you go on YouTube and, and you see some of the some of the fight films with you in them this guy's right Freddie Pendleton's right hand was like a sledgehammer with a jet engine behind it yeah I mean the, the, my favorite fight was the uh, Tyrone Trice fight. I, I, anybody expected me to lose, and it was crazy. I expected me to lose because I took the fight on five days' notice. I was playing basketball when they called me for the fight, and I told them, "Hey, ready for, I haven't been to the gym. I haven't been doing anything." He said, "We got to fight for you a week later." So I said, "A week later?" I said, "I haven't been training." He said, well, it's $5,000. I said, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. I mean, at the time, you know, you need money. My, I'm there with my mom need money. I was trying to help her out. So, you know, I took the fight, and I won the fight. I knocked him out. In the, I think it was the second round. I knocked him out. And, I mean, put him down three times. They stopped the fight. It was one of the biggest wins I ever had. So, yeah. He's aware of that lesson needed to be learned at home. Heavy right hand that landed on the side of the face of Tyrone Trice and hurt. Tyrone Trice in a terrible surprise. And now he gets knocked down again. Now moves the fighters in. Trice is down again. And that is the fight. Funny how those those earlier ones that, that you know you fight as a fighter, those earlier bouts that you had in those matches are sometimes when I, when I talk to a lot of guys those are the ones they really remember yeah, it's crazy I'm still you know it's hearing about the Mayweather fight and everybody's pulling it up and showing me I saw that man I'm like the young people watch it and they tell me about it and I'm like wow that's it and from another angle you will see the right hand of Freddie Pendleton he had landed several before none quite as effective as that one I'm not so certain Mayweather, Al, wasn't out with the first right to put him up against Well, the if not the first, certainly that second one there. You guys got to understand, you know, Roger Mayweather was my friend. I didn't want to fight him, and I was forced to fight him, and I took the fight, and um, we got it, you know, at the press conference, they got a little, a little ugly for a minute, you know, and then that's what angered me, and I went in there and and I tried and I gave everything I had to get him out of there and I and I was forced to do that because he was a very skilled fighter. Seventy eight fights, and and look at him. I mean, he's is in phenomenal shape. Um, he's he's still training. He's still working young fighters. Uh, how do you do it? I, I work out. I, I keep working out, and the young kids 
And my son, you know, they keep me young. They keep, I, I look at them and I see what they do and I, and I try to help them. Right now I'm trying to um, open up my own gym and help some of these kids in these, in these rough neighborhoods to get themselves out of the street and have something to do. Because a lot of the gyms have closed down. You know, you're right uh, in that respect. A lot, of the, a lot of the boxing gyms in Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Detroit, um, and, and in Florida where you're at now, um, a, lot of the, a lot of that old school stuff has, has gone away. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it when I went through the neighborhoods and, and I'm looking at all these places that were open and now closed. And here it is, we had we have a ton of fighters that that you know that were boxing at the time when I when I came into Florida. We had a lot of amateur guys boxing stuff like that. Hardly any of them have come back into the sport to you know follow the the coach before them's footsteps and teach you know what they were taught. And it's just like, how can we leave our kids like that? We have to do something. You know, we can't let these kids be out in the street finding things to do because they don't have nothing else to do and just get in trouble, you know, get shot, run around. You know, it's, it's just, we have to do something. And I'm going to be one of the guys that, that, you know, try to open up something and get these kids off the street and help them out. Boxing traditionally and the, and, and, and the art has always been uh, something that uh, has afforded the opportunity for a lot of young people that uh, felt they had nowhere to go in their life to have somewhere to go. Well, let me tell you, you've been going for a long time. Um, come out of Philly, right? And uh, you boxed in a lightweight division, about 130 pounds or so, right? Uh, 1985, he wins the title in Pennsylvania. He won a title in Pennsylvania in 1985. Won the state championship, it was crazy. <laughs> okay, and then, and then in 1986, right after that, um, you get a, you get a, uh, you you fight, you fight Mayweather, you fight Roger Mayweather, You're the, the man you just talked about, and you TKO'd him. He taught me, I mean, so many things I didn't have any idea about boxing. He he made me much smarter. He made I made a lot more money because of him. And, um, you know, I owe him, you know, because he, you know, he showed me a lot. Now, 1986 rolls around and it's still going on. And uh, you win the USBA lightweight title, right? <laughs> yeah, I won the USBA lightweight title. See, what I'm doing to him is I'm making him really go back in his memory. And, and, and what you're seeing in, in Freddie's face is he's going, oh, yeah, I remember that day on Tuesday when I was boxing. That's what's happening. He's reliving it. <laughs> I had to pop this guy's cap because he, he was telling me how he's going to beat me up. And then and I saw him, I said, look, we could fight in your mother's backyard and you couldn't beat me there. And he, he said, oh, he's talking about my mother. I ain't going to let nobody talk about my mother. We almost fought right there. So we ended up at the, at the fight night. I, I took him out in four. Introducing to you on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. Entering the ring tonight, gold trunks with blue trim. Fighting out of Miami Beach, Florida. He weighs in tonight an even 140 pounds. His record is 23 wins, 15 losses, 3 draws, 13 wins by way of knockout. He's ranked number 6 by the WBC, number 2 by the IBF, and he is the USBA lightweight champion. They call him fearless, Freddie Pendleton. Look at Freddie Pendleton come out firing. Freddie Pendleton stopped Sammy Fuentes in just the way that he tried to do John Montez there. Freddie Pendleton stopped Sammy Fuentes in 15 seconds, coming out, he ducked under a shot, landed an overhand right, and it was over before you knew it. Well, you know, I'll tell you something, Rich, the most dangerous part of the fight are the first two rounds, because you're not warmed up, and any shot like that with any kind of momentum or power is going to put your lights right out. A quick exchange, they're getting to it early as we thought they might. Freddie Pendleton is a supremely confident fighter. This kid was 12 and 12 when Ed Gersh took over the managerial reins, and since then he has really come on. He has knocked out 10 of his last 11 opponents, including the last six in a row. He is ranked second by the IBF in the lightweight division and seventh by the WBC in the super lightweight division. He's ranked in the top 10 in two different divisions, Pendleton is, and he is the USBA lightweight champion. 
Mendelin now moves inside, in close. And Montez is willing to mix it up with him. John Leonard, a good right hand. Good left hook by Pendleton with Montez against the ropes. As we come to the end of round one. Having a little bit of difficulty dealing with some of the quickness of Pendleton, who lands a right hand. And down goes John Montez. He is up. They will toll off the mandatory eight count, and then the bell will ring after Dr. James Jenkin signals for them to come together. So now it rolls around 87 and 88. Um, these were pretty good years, too. You, you had some good fights in 87 88. You fought, uh, you fought uh, a Trinidad, Felix Trinidad. You fought um, Frank, Frankie uh, uh, Riddell, R Frankie Randall. Frankie, Ran Frankie Randall. Uh, my first new manager, who was Ed Gersh. I signed with him, and um, things went pretty well for a good little while, and then it got to a point where, you know, we had to go our separate ways. Well, it, it's like any business relationship. I mean, if uh, if you've been in business, and, in, you know, sometimes that relationship, right. you got to get a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, so now 1990 rolls around. You get your first WBC IBF shot with uh, uh, Pernell Whitaker. Yeah, Pernell Whitaker, he was... One of the most skilled fighters I've ever been in the ring with. And, um, I mean, he, he gave me a lot of respect when the fight was over. And his mother told me, she hugged me and told me she'd never seen anybody give him that kind of fight. And she was scared throughout the fight that I was going to land the shot and hurt him. And she was glad that her baby won, which I can understand that. But, you know, I mean, they I was given a lot of respect from Pernell and his mother and, um, I, I felt, a lot of people felt that I won, but I'm I'm the old school type of fighter. I say, you don't beat a champion unless you defeat a champion. That means you got to beat him up convincing. By February of 1990, Freddie faced his toughest opponent yet, the reigning world champion, Cornell Whitaker. He held on for 12 rounds and had his moments, but lost the decision. So, 93 rolls around, and, and now you get your shot. Back at the IBF title, it, it's a it's a vacated title, I believe. Am, am I right with that? Now you get your shot. You get your shot, and uh, I mean, it's like Rocky all the way, right? I mean, you you, you get that in the sense that when I Pernell was was told he had to fight me again, and he said if he didn't fight me again, then he had to fight the number one, which was Tracy Span, and Tracy Span was a vicious puncher on the southpaw and. And Southpaw is always dangerous. So when they came at me, when they came to Pernell, he said, I'm out. And he moved up to 140. And then me and Trey Spann had to fight because I was number one and he was number two. So when, we, when they made that match, I told everybody, I can beat this guy. And this guy is not going to be hard. And everybody told me I was crazy. I mean, one thing about Tracy Spann, he could punch. I mean, he could punch. But when I, when I faced him, I told, I told him. I told him before the fight, the first time we fought, it was called uh, it was called a, a majority city, a draw because headbutt. I was about to, I was about to take him out. I hit him with a nice left right, and he staggered. When I went to finish him off, he came forward with his head and did this here. This fight. The fight didn't end the way either one had planned, but now they have a the chance to do it again, and this time to rewrite the ending the way they want. We're not completed here. The belt is declared a technical draw. To re I had to retaliate in the next fight and put him down. But even the, even in the next fight, he gave, he put up a good fight because he he hurt me again. It was like you know deja vu because the first time he knocked me down, the second fight he hits me in the first and this was in the first round. In the second fight, boom, he catches me with a good shot in the first round again and staggered me and I came back that time and fought him off. And this time I beat him up pretty bad in the second fight and won the title. Well, you see, that, that was one of your traits. I mean, nobody has ever said that you could not take a shot and, 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 and dish it out. I mean, that's where that fearless kind of, you know, monic moniker came from, that, that uh, everybody, and when you watch your, your fights, I mean, you could get off in the ring there and throw in left and rights and uppercuts and right hands and overhands and everything, and, and your opponent doing the same thing. And... and it, it was like a war. You're like a, you were like a, a wall. We, I was taught by my first trainer. The guy's name was Jimmy Hill. And um, I was taught by him. He taught me. He said, 
he's based on the old skills. You know, he taught me like the old fighters were taught Robinson, all the other guys, uh, you know, Jersey Joe, all these guys were taught how to throw punches, combinations. They said he told me that you gotta be if you throw a punch, you gotta know how to defense against that punch. You can't just go in the ring and just throw punches. You have to know how to defense against that punch, what to do when you how to move around the ring, how to step around a person. He taught me everything and he made me teach it to another kid so it stays in here. The rematch was set immediately. For Tracy Spanner, he needs to sustain his effort. He's a very quick starter, but uh, he may have to sustain it for a while in this spot if he doesn't get Pendleton out early. Don't ignore the body. Important for him to slow Pendleton down. Freddie needs to counterpunch very effectively. And later is better for him. I think the later the fight goes, the better it is for Pendleton, even if he is to score a knockout. Really looking forward to this fight. Let's talk about the rules, the IBF rules, of course. A couple of differences. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight, which you saw in the other bouts, and pretty much the rest remains the same. All right, the winner will be the champion. And, and there is a look at Freddie Pendleton. As he mentioned, he was literally a late bloomer. He had a couple of years that he suffered through that for any fighter just were not very pretty. We'll talk more about that. Here are the knockout percentages. As you can see, Stan obviously is the greater of the two. Good left hand, that staggered Pendleton. Well, Pendleton holds on, he is in trouble. Deja vu all over again, huh? And he best get in his fight for the rest of this round. Bell can't save you, remember. Another left hand, just a little short with that, and the first round is over. Right hand to the top of the head by Span. Got Pendleton's attention, also got him out of there. Freddie Pendleton, I don't believe, is moving. There, there's the move. Move to the left. Push off and move to the left. He's not doing that as much as he was in the first round. Another good right hand by Span. It was a counter right. After a hook by Pendleton, you're right. And, and Pendleton is much more in there where he can be hit by Span. Yeah, yeah, by Pendleton. Pendleton's starting to find a home for that right hand. And I think he is really hurting Span. But that's what Span needs to do. Push him back. Turn this into a brawl and rip the shot to the body in the head. That's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That was a right hand by Pat That was a good third shot. He missed with that one. He's getting there with that punch from time to time, like that. Sharp punch, straight right hand. Into the sixth round, and Pendleton likely did enough to win that round. It's a good right by Pendleton to make sure that they don't hold all the time. Now, Pendleton's fight, his stance fight right now, but getting away with it and doing pretty well. Pendleton's just punching sharp. Yes, and he's right there where Spans should be doing better work. He's just a little bit off here, so he's not landing well. And now Pendleton's almost able to do what he wants. You know, this fight, I have to say, Ron Katz, the matchmaker, was mentioning that in a, in a certain way, this looks a little bit like the hagler Leonard fight. Pendleton up and might have hurt him right at the end of the round. We'll be back. I've got Pendleton ahead by four points. And obviously only two left. So knockdowns at least are essentially. There's a right hook by Span. I think part of it is that Pendleton has made him respect his power, Barry. Yeah, it was a right hook by Span and a better counter right by Pendleton. Now, oddly enough, he got hurt in the first round this time, yeah. too. Good body shot came up with a combination. Now, Freddie Pendleton doesn't have the greatest uppercut in the world. It's a punch that works real well against Span. There you saw him throw it. He just has Span completely frustrated right now. And Spans is falling around the ring and pawing with his punches. And Pendleton now talking to Span, doing the alley shuffle the whole bit. And you know, normally you might say, well, a hot dog. You know what, Freddie? <laughs> turned the right to do that after the ups and downs he's had in his career. He has been charmed. Oh my, he hurt Span. He hurt him badly. And Span is in big trouble. And he's got a long way to go. And it won't take much for Span to go down. We'll only take one more punch. And there's that punch. Randy Newman looking closely here. Span finally gets off the ropes. Still a long way to go. And you know what's interesting? Pendleton is not being reckless even now. You understand? Even a heart tracing Span, you don't want to give him a chance to take your title games away. Because this has punctuated this win. Yeah, Span is still on really wobbly legs here. for 15 seconds to go in a fight. Excellent game plan. Excellent execution by Freddie Pendleton. Now we'll see if the judges agree. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Harris Atlantic City, we go to the scorecards.
Gene Williams scores the bout 117 to 111. Gary Merritt has it the same way, 117 to 111. And Rick Bay scores it 116 to 112 for the winner who is now the brand new IBM lightweight champion of the world, Peerless Ray you hold the title belt for a body year, right? And across the ring, his opponent wearing the white trunks with red trim, also weighing 135 pounds. He comes to us tonight from Miami, Florida. And as a professional, he's 35, 18 and 4. 23 by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the IBF lightweight champion of the world, Fearless, Freddy Pendleton. Fearless Freddy in the white trunks, and Rafael Ruelas, green, trimmed in red. Good lateral movement from Pendleton, but Ruelas smothers him. If you're a fighter like Pendleton, you've got to slide over and cut off that win. He's too good laterally. You can't let him run. Good jab. Ruelas was listed as being about four inches tall. Oh! oh. Right hand, and Ruelas goes down. Pendleton throws one punch. Yeah. Right hand over the top. You follow that jab back. Ruelas a little bit slow with that left jab. And the count the first went to eight. Yep, one punch thrown by Freddie at right hand. The right hand, he says that is his favorite punch. Describes himself as a boxer puncher. Well, it's obvious that Rafael Ruelas uh, will be thinking about that thing. 23 KOs, uh -oh. 35 wins for Pendleton. Good power. Ruelas is in trouble. Second time he's been down. Very big trouble. You've got to keep that chin down and those hands up. And if you can, you've got to try to move. It's difficult to do, to do if you're a fighter like Ruelas. You can't stand there and slug with him. You've got to tie him up. Ruelas is only still hurt. He is wobbly. You've got to tie up Freddie Pendleton. He's too fast. Pendleton is all over his band. Would like to finish it in the round. Opening round of thunderous right hand. Remember, there's no three knockdown rule. It is not in effect in this fight. So Ruelas is going to have to fight his way out of this, and Pendleton's going to have to put him down and keep him down if he expects to end it here in round one. And if you're Rafael Ruelas, you're back in your corner. You just got to plant your feet and fight. Take your shot. Good left hit by Ruelas. Pendleton sticks his tongue out at him. Another right hand by Pendleton and a pretty good left. Oh, those right hands are doing so, so much damage right on the temple. 21 seconds remaining in round one. Pendleton has had his man down twice. Ruelas trying to weather the storm here in this opening round. 10 seconds remain. Make it through round, round number one, there's the bell. Who else? Yeah, knocked him down four times, twice in the first round. down again in the ninth round and then again in the twelfth round. So. I don't blame him. Yeah, but, but on the inside, you got to keep those hands moving. you got to keep punching if you're Ruelas. Even if you're Pendleton. Sometimes you cannot run in that ring. Your opponent's all over you. The time is the biggest ally that yeah. Pendleton has, and Ruelas is doing nothing about it. Maybe he can. 
Maybe he's as bone weary as anybody. Oh, down he goes. No knockdown. A push, they said. That was a Pendleton has got a new lease on life, and Ruelas, I think, has let the lightweight title slip away. Ruelas in his own corner, and Pendleton has found a little yeah. more gas in the yeah. tank. When he realizes that this round is about over and this fight is about done, and he will be still the champion. Ruelas seems to have lost all contact with time. I think I won this fight. It's like a weightlifter. While protesting the decision. So then the commissioner comes back and says, well, the knockdown in the, in, the, in the ninth round was a legitimate knockdown, but you still, the knockdown in the twelfth round was questionable. I said, okay, well, still, all right, let's say it's not four knockdowns. Let's say it's three knockdowns. So how could I lose the fight? A lot of people said that that, that fight was robbed. You, they, 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 they robbed that from you. Checko. Freddie Pacheco said he was at the fight. He said this was one of the worst robberies he's ever seen in the history of boxing. He's never seen a champion put a challenger down that many times and lose his belt. Tell and us about this this idea you have. Um, you, you talked about it earlier, about a school and, and, and a gym and a school. and, and Expand on that a little bit. It's going to be like we want to bring kids in and be able to do more than just teach them, you know, fitness and, and boxing you want to teach you want to teach a kid you know as far as to be able to handle himself on the street as far as not handle himself in the street as far as fist is concerned handling yourself in the street by knowing how to talk know how to associate yourself with each other how to play with each other and deal with each other without everything becoming physical because anybody can say anything to you but where do you see boxing going are, are we going to have the opportunity again to see the 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 health of the business come back where we will have those exciting fights and matches in all the weight brackets again do you think i think it's going to take a while but we we going i'm going to try to be one of the ones one of the first people to really try to help bring us back because you know i teach basic fundamentals before you go into anything else yeah and then nowadays you you have to learn how to um manipulate your way through the different ratings that they have and Get ready high enough and fight the correct people to move yourself in position to get a title fight. How did you get the name Fearless? <laughs> That's funny. We was in the gym. I mean, we was, in, we was ready to fight. I'm ready to go out to a fight. My trainer said, they keep calling you Freddie Pellin. He said, we got to come up with a nickname. What do you think we should name you? We, we, we ain't got nothing else. I said, let me tell you something. I'm not afraid to fight anybody. So we'll, we'll go with that. You know, you know, I, I, I'll fight the, the toughest fighter out there. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I, I said, I'm fearless. He said, that's a good name right there. We call it. We call you fearless. So he said, I said, what? He said, that's what your name will be, fearless. So they named me fearless. It has been such a, such a blast sitting here. And, uh, you know, I had to set the camera up. And Freddie's been so patient with me. I was late to the interview. He's so patient with me. And. And uh, I'm glad he's so patient with me because I don't want to feel that right hand, baby. <laughs> this is fun. This is fun. I enjoy, you know, I enjoy, you know, interviewing. I enjoy, you know, because me, I like to show my face a lot. So I like so I come to smile on the camera and have a little fun. But, um, you know, I, I mean, this is good for me. I can do this at any time. I love it. I love it. What, what do we see happening for you uh, on the scene now? Well, I'm hoping that I can get in, I can get a few of my fighters up in the ratings and get them started. I'm working with Joey. I mean, we have to rebuild and start all over again, but I, it's, it's a possibility. And I know he has it in him. He showed me tonight that he's going to work hard. Uh, on AV Entertainment Live, www.aventertainmentlive.com. That's AVE TV Live here with fearless uh, Freddie Pendleton, IBF champion of the world. For the winner who is now the brand new IBF lightweight champion of the world, fearless Freddie Pendleton. Well, a well earned win for Freddie Pendleton and the judges card pretty much agreeing with our own here. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, for tuning in, and uh, always remember, aventertainmentlive.com, www.aventertainmentlive.com. It's AVE TV Live. Jesse Torero, I'm out of here. Fearless Freddie Pendleton, everybody.
Have a good night, everybody. See you.